It's been a long time coming since Six Flags Great Adventure has gotten a brand new original roller coaster, yet in 2021 they finally debuted Jersey Devil, a brand new custom single rail roller coaster from Rocky Mountain Construction RMC. Jersey Devil sits next to Nitro, it takes up some of the land that was occupied by the kids area. It stands 130 feet tall with a max speed of 58 miles per hour and flips you upside down three times. It is only the fourth single rail coaster currently in existence, and the other three all have an almost identical layout. That's what makes this one so unique. And in this review, I'm going to dive in deep, tell you exactly what you can expect when you go out to ride this new attraction. Now, beyond the obvious of having a different layout, the biggest change that we see with this roller coaster is the longer trains. Wonder Woman and Railblazer have an eight car train. Stunt Pilot has a 10 car train. This one has a 12 car train and it has the ability of running up to four trains. They're able to do this because this ride also has a mid course brake run while the others do not. So that kind of splits up the ride into almost two halves, and I'm going to really talk about that a little bit later in this video. But the main reason why the longer trains is so important is because typically when you have a longer train, you have to draw your elements a bit more because you have to accommodate for the G-force in the back rows. So when you look at something like Wonder Woman, it's going to execute those maneuvers at a different pace. And that's the main reason why Jersey Devil feels actually pretty different from some of those other Raptors. That does not mean that this ride is not extreme or anything. It is absolutely one of the wildest rides at Six Flags Great Adventure and they have a lot of roller coasters. I think that's just important to understand going into this ride. I think by nature Jersey Devil was designed to appeal to a larger audience. But don't worry roller coaster enthusiasts are still going to love this thing when you sit towards the front or the back you get a little bit crazier of an experience. But let's really walk through everything with this attraction starting with when you actually get to the plaza. Like I said the entrance is past Nitro towards their rapids. It has its own dedicated area. You can immediately see this big old entrance sign. There's a devil statue that they actually reused from their old Larson loop that they removed. Great way of repurposing. It looks fantastic there, much better than in front of the Larson loop. And what I love is how the sign is so perfectly framed with the zero G stall and the zero G roll. So visually, the ride already looks great. Unfortunately, because of its location, all of the best photos that you're going to be able to get of Jersey Devil are actually on the other side of the roller coaster that is not available to guest access. That's where you're seeing most of this footage. That's because Jersey Devil, in a way, is kind of tucked around some trees. It's actually going to make for a really great night ride. I did not have the opportunity to experience it at night, but I can imagine it's going to be awesome. When you enter the queue, you're going to see some signs kind of explaining the lore of the Jersey Devil. But that's really it as far as theming goes. Once you actually enter the station, there's really not anything. But what is cool about the station is it is a moving loading platform. That means the train doesn't stop until you are all ready to go and then they send it up the lift hill. This also makes for faster operations, which is really great. Like all of the major attractions at Six Flags Great Adventure, Jersey Devil does have a locker system, so there are not bins on the platform for you to put your things. And because the train doesn't stop moving, that makes a lot of sense. Restraint wise, this is gonna be the same setup as your other Raptors. So the bar comes down over you and there's some shoulder straps. And of course, everyone sits in that single file line. Almost feels like you're riding like a motorcycle or a dirt bike. If you've never gotten a chance to ride one of these Raptors, that's really the defining feature of why this ride is so cool. When you only have one seat across, it means that you can take some of these elements at a tighter radius. In a sense, it means the ride is gonna be more extreme. When you ride Jersey Devil, it feels like you're riding a bucking Bronco. It absolutely feels out of control, and that's why these Raptors are so cool. Now you start up the lift hill, it is very loud. You're gonna get a great view of Nitro to your right, and to your left, you're gonna be able to look out and see the water right behind Six Flags Great Adventure, so it's really pretty. This would be a really cool attraction to do a lift walk for. I could just stand up there and take pictures for hours. You reach the top and start to crest over your first drop, which is at 87 degrees. So not quite vertical, but it certainly feels vertical. And like all roller coasters, this is really an element that you're going to want to experience in the back row. This first drop is awesome. You get absolutely launched out of your seat. It also feels a little different from the other Raptors because with the other ones, they take a turnaround first. So they start to build up a little bit of speed. This one, you don't have as much speed going into it because because, well, you're detaching from the chain lift. So does that make the first drop better or worse? I don't know, I guess it depends on who you ask. Personally, I think the first drop is totally awesome, and so I wasn't really busy thinking about, oh, do I like that first drop better than Wonder Woman or Railblazer or a stunt pilot? I don't know, because immediately you start building up some speed, 
hit your max point at 58 miles per hour and your first element is a dive loop so just like the other raptors now what's funny about this moment is i had just done stunt pilot about a week prior to doing jersey devil and the profiling of it is also different so what they did with stunt pilot was they actually start to invert you a little bit sooner so you almost get some hang time before going through this element as opposed to jersey devil you start to rise up and then flip out at the last minute i think with the start of this dive loop there is potential for in the front row of you actually getting some airtime versus stunt pilot's dive loop you're not really going to gain any airtime at that moment but regardless, I love these things. It's a great start to the ride. And Jersey Devil's really just getting started because after that, we have this massive airtime hill. Absolutely fantastic ejector airtime moment. Probably the single best airtime moment on the attraction, if you ask me. But Jersey Devil keeps the momentum going. Right after that is arguably the best element on the roller coaster, and that is a zero-G stall. Now, this is technically the first Raptor to feature that. The others have cut back, so they do have some moments where you kind of hang there for a little bit. But this one really holds you there. So in a way that is unique to Jersey Devil, but you can find out on other RMC roller coasters and they're always amazing. I think there's just something about taking that stall on a single rail. You really just whip into it and whip out of it. It is a very cool sensation. So now you've reached the furthest point of the ride, you rise up into this carousel turnaround. You pop up, turn to the right, and drop back down. In the front, the best airtime moment is gonna be rising into the turnaround, and in the back, the best airtime moment is gonna be dropping out of it. So in addition to being a really fun way of turning around, it also visually looks very cool. But there's one more element in the first half of the ride, and that is a zero G roll. This is the one that is right in line with that stall that you see right when you're entering the attraction. You see the big sign there, the roller coaster twisting around it. And this is a fairly fast paced zero G roll. I think in general, the first half of Jersey Devil is a lot stronger than the second half. The pacing is really well done. And I, I really wish I could say the same for the second half. I think that's where Jersey Devil suffers. Now I got a premise, I rode Jersey Devil six times. So I really did get a good feel for it and I could see the roller coaster was speeding up the more and more I rode it because it was getting later in the day. But I did not do Jersey Devil in the evening when it was probably running the fastest. So I say that because I'm basing this review off of my experience on it. I would love to go back there and experience it at night. I imagine that this stance would change, but as of when I rode it, the second half was disappointing. Now I think the main reason for that is with some of these airtime hills at the end of the ride. They're a lot smaller, and RMC does small airtime hills really well. And that wasn't really there on this ride. I wouldn't even say some of these airtime hills were floater. I didn't really get airtime period in some of these maneuvers. You just kind of gracefully went over them. I think if the train were just running faster, it would be a different story. And I probably would take it back and say, yeah, those twisted airtime hills were awesome. And frankly, I was surprised that that was not the case. Since you ride something like Wonder Woman, it feels like it is going way too fast the entire time. Now, was it supposed to be like that? I don't know. If that's the case, then you could say that they got Jersey Devil going at the speed that maybe Raptors were designed originally to go at. Who knows? I mean, no matter what, Jersey Devil is a great roller coaster. Like, don't get me wrong, I really, really did enjoy it. I think I just had my expectations set a little too high, thinking maybe this would be my favorite Raptor, and frankly, it wasn't. Wonder Woman Golden Lasso Coaster is still my favorite Raptor. But again, I have to preface, I rode this ride on media day. It was before it even opened to the public. I imagine on an evening in the summer, this is gonna be running really well. So if anything, if you're planning on visiting the park, take this review as something that maybe this is an attraction you do later in the day as opposed to earlier in the day. So for Jersey Devil's final score, I'll be giving it a nine out of 10. Reason why I say that? Element wise, I think it's a fantastic layout. The first half is pretty much perfect. I wouldn't really change anything about it. In the second half, when you strictly look at the different elements that they've worked into the layout, it's great. If the train can pace a little bit better through them, then it'd probably be a 10 out of 10 for me. It's still better than like 90% of all roller coasters I've ridden. Is it my favorite attraction at Six Flags Great Adventure? No, that is still El Toro. Is it my second favorite or third favorite? Yeah, it, it's definitely top three. I just have to think about whether I like it more than King Dukkah. I actually really like King Dukkah, so I'm still undecided where I stand on that one. But no matter what, this really is a fantastic fit to Six Flags Great Adventure. I'm thrilled that they got this roller coaster, and I'm excited for the next time I go back to Great Adventure to see how or if it has changed. But those are just my thoughts. If you've had the chance to ride Jersey Devil, I would love to hear what you think of it if you agree with the things that I've said. And if you're new to the channel or this is the first time you're watching a review, I hope you'll consider subscribing. We do roller coaster reviews for rides all across the world. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.